where we find a multi-million dollar slice of country living just a stone's throw from the city. <laughs> oh man, I need a hot tub. Refine takes you on an eye-popping tour of a waterfront palace fit for a king. Plus, Independence Day is right around the corner. So Gary, these lanterns could really make your patriotic party pop. <laughs> it sure could, Malia. We'll show you some crafty tricks to make sure your July 4th picnic is truly dynamite. And what are the upsides of being a mermaid? Constantly fabulous hair, great abs from swimming with your fin. We'll take a dip with Seattle's Secret Swimming Club. Seattle Refined starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. You know, one of the things I love most about this job is it gives me a chance to glimpse how the other half lives. For instance, our region boasts some of the most spectacular waterfront homes in the world. And all this week, our sponsor, Windermere Real Estate, is giving Refined a VIP tour of some of the most spectacular around. Today's stop takes us to Burien. Man, this is so my style, so peaceful, so tranquil here. Let's go check out this house. Hey, hey good to see you again. Good to see you again. Yeah. What is the deal with this house? Isn't it striking, oh my modern, gosh. contemporary, custom, brand new? I love it. The custom pivot style front door is the focal point of the entry and the gateway to what lies beyond. A stunning main living space featuring vaulted ceilings, a gorgeous gas fireplace, and walls reinforced to showcase artwork. It's both elegant and functional. So this space we're in right here, of course, the living room. Right. And what's nice about this house, I love contemporary homes, but if they're mm -hmm. too cold, it turns me off. Right. This one is just warm. It's got that Northwest feel to it. Yes, and probably it's all because of all the wood. It's mm -hmm. all reclaimed. So what you have on the ceiling, the beams, etc., it's um, blue pine. And in the, on the floor here, it's uh, mountain uh, Douglas fir. This Burien beauty is the bomb. Sitting on 60 feet of waterfront sets the tone of the entire property. We are very close to the airport and to civilization. However, you feel like you are in the middle of the countryside. And as a matter of fact, when the sellers bought this, they really felt like they were almost like in the San Juans. And uh, so being on the waterfront like this is like you feel like on holiday, on vacation all year round. The home boasts sweeping water views from almost every room, including the gourmet kitchen. You have a salamander to grill steaks, etc. You have a wine cooler and a beautiful green marble on the countertop. It's really a spectacular kitchen. The home also boasts five and a half baths with four separate master suites. That's right, four. It's nearly 6,000 square feet of lovable living. It's all accessible via the gorgeous floating staircase. But why use the stairs when you can take the elevator? So, guard, this is a main master en suite. Look at this. Private deck right here. And uh, as you can see, the bathroom is pretty spectacular. It is. But before we get to that, I, yes. I am like speechless right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this view is spectacular. Can you imagine just lying in bed right here mm -hmm. and checking that view out? And you have to tell me about this master bath. I mean, it's huge. Yes, it has a really a, an amazing Japanese influence with a soaking tub. You'll have to try that. Actually, that tub gets filled up really quickly. It has a hot water tank just for the tub. Really? Yes. And a huge shower, um, high-end everything in this bathroom. You have also a little kitchenette right there if you want to make your coffee and have your coffee in bed or in your private deck. The master bath is incredible. Just make sure you enter the tub the right way. <laughs> oh man, I need a hot tub. <laughs> this is really nice here. The entire property is designed with thoughtfulness and care, including the grounds. This home really offers extended living, doesn't it? Right, look at this yard, isn't it beautiful? It doesn't have to be watered, it's just self-sustained. The garden was actually designed before the main house was designed. We've only been here a few minutes, and just mm -hmm. how, how relaxing is it right now? Just, just being out here, you have the wind, you hear the birds, you have the water. Yeah, it's like being in the middle of an island somewhere, and it really is soothing. Want to see more? The Washington Waterfront Home Tour sponsored by Windermere Real Estate is this Saturday and Sunday. To learn more, log on to our website.
From waterfront mansions to slightly more cramped castles, our refined team is always on the search for cool, tiny homes, and we have found one that's out of this world. You have to blast off to central Washington to find this eye-catching space-age house. It's hard not to be over the moon when you see this 250 square foot lunar lander inspired home. It sits on the banks of the Columbia River. It features a breakfast nook, a dome skylight, and a sunken bedroom accessible by ladder. To learn more, check out the full gallery on our website. Speaking of homes of the future, two Seattle area projects are among the first in the world to achieve zero energy certifications. The Emerald Star and Core Cost projects are the work of Seattle green home builder Dwell Development. They're located in the Ballard and Columbia City neighborhoods. To learn more, check out the gallery on our website. From eco-friendly homes to life under the sea, summer is almost here, and that means the arrival of mermaid season here in the Puget Sound. Refine's John Prentice followed their magical mer song straight to the Seattle shoreline. For some Seattleites, the siren song of becoming a mermaid is just too strong to resist. Growing up, I was always really shy, and you know, I saw videos of these beautiful mermaids in Florida, and they were swimming, and and they were just so outgoing and beautiful and I was just like I want to do that and it's like I've always loved the ocean I've always wanted to do something related to the ocean and I was like I'm gonna buy a mermaid tail. Being in the water is really calming it's a great place to relieve anxiety and just get away from human troubles for a while. I love cosplay so yeah it's just like a new fun way of exploring cosplay that's also um, functional you can swim in these tails quite easily and quite fast as well so it's pretty awesome. Believe it or not there is a growing mermaid community in Seattle. Occasionally you might see one at the pool but in the summer they take to the open water. The Seattle mermaid community was started as part of a community project here and as a way for friends to get together and enjoy recreational outdoor swimming during the summer months. You can find many of us myself many days in Lake Washington swimming around. I will even take dips in the Puget Sound because in the warmer months it's not that cold? I mean, I am an orca, so I'm used to it. It's definitely different from swimming in a pool. Uh, you need to watch out for, you know, the sea creatures, and you want to avoid getting in their space. It's more freeing, I guess you could say, than being in an artificial pool. As our mermaids were out basking in a rare northwest sunbeam, they were spotted by a young potential recruit. Say cheese! Oh, oh it's so nice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> I asked my mom and dad if I can be a mermaid. Why do you want to be a mermaid? Because I want to see in the water. I want to find seashells. What, what color tail would you have if you were a mermaid? Blue. Do you want to be a mermaid too? It's easier than you think. You would be a grown-up that still likes to play dress-up, which is what most of us are. And you could find a lot of different monofins online and you find some tail skins or you make some tail skins and get together with a gossip of mermaids and go out and swim. That is the actual term for a group of mermaids is a gossip. What's the allure of being a mermaid? Constantly fabulous hair, great abs from swimming with your fin. Why not be a mermaid? John Prentice, Seattle Refined. To learn more about Seattle's secret mermaid society, log on to the website. Coming up on Seattle Refined, a suspected scam turns into a labor of love. How some photos from a far off land developed into a beautiful friendship. But first, Thank how you. did you make this cake stand? Super easy, actually. Plates, okay. candlesticks, spray paint, doily. Refined's very own Mad Hatter shares his recipe for picnic perfection when we come back. But first, don't forget to join us this Thursday at Pacific Place for the 2018 Bachelor Open Casting Call. Come down and meet the producers and audition for the show, or just stop by and enjoy a cocktail and people watch. Registration begins at 3 p.m. To download an application or learn more, log on to seattlerefine.com forward slash bachelor. I love it. Welcome back to the show. I'm Guard Swanson. You know, some of Seattle's biggest names in food are headed to the Far East. According to the website Eater.com, a new Seattle-centric foodie complex is opening at the International Airport in Nagoya, Japan. It's part of a Boeing commercial complex called Flight of Dreams. 
travelers will stroll down a reconstructed Seattle streetscape and be able to try items from Franz Chocolates, Features Cheese, Pike Brewing, Eltana Bagels, Starbucks, and more. Sounds pretty cool. Closer to home, our refined roving photographer discovered some food that's almost too beautiful to eat. Check out the gorgeous grub at 1909 Kitchen in Tofino, BC. From beautiful seafood platters to wood fried pizza, every plate from Chef Paul Morgan's kitchen looks like a work of art. Make sure to check out the full gallery on our website. The countdown is on to my favorite time of year. Summer officially begins this Thursday, and that means picnic season. Our sponsor, Seattle Goodwill, has everything you need for a great gathering. Here's for finds Malia Karlinski. If you're hosting a patriotic party, Goodwill's your go-to place for decor and supplies. DIY guy Gary Foy shared some sweet ways to make your picnic pure perfection. So Gary, 4th of July is coming up. Time to pull out the red, white, and blue. What can we find here at Goodwill? We got it all. Come on down to the Goodwill. You want to mash it up. You want to do some new with the old and make it look complete. It's like a treasure hunt, isn't it? It's always a treasure hunt. You've got some creative touches here I haven't seen before. You know, I really try to go with that rustic feel. So how did you create this really cool sign? You know, it was really easy to do. Um, I just went into the computer, pulled up a font, threw in some colored paper on my printer, printed it out, and then grabbed some, uh, like an old book or newspaper, and you cut it out and you, you know, you make a, the whole sign complete. So when you're displaying fruit, you don't have to just throw the fruit in a bowl. Cake stands work really well. You know, you don't want your flies on your fruit, right? And grapes are Okay, I grabbed this old colander off the sales floor, popped them in there, and it kind of fills out that rustic feel. Well, let's get to making some of this stuff. Let's do it. So Gary, these lanterns could really make your patriotic party pop. <laughs> it sure could, Malia. All you need is Super 77, okay. crepe paper, obviously red, white, and blue, mason jars, and some little lights. You want to take the paper and you want to cut about two inch little squares. And by cut, do you mean tear? Tear. Okay. <laughs> I like that torn look, it looks a little bit more can I say the word rustic enough? I don't know if I've said it enough, but we're doing rustic. I call it Americana. It's more of that picnic knickknack that oh. we're trying to do here. Oh. Now that you've got your crepe paper torn, you're ready to start placing them in. But first, you got to use the Super 77. So I like to do short little bursts. Start taking them and placing them in like this. Now what do we do? Put the lights in. Let's turn them on, shall we? I think we should. Boom, there they go, look how cute! Gary, you're lighting up my holiday. Aw, oh, thanks, Aaliyah. So Gary, how did you make these really charming treat stands here? It's super simple. All you need is some old plates. And you could do like, you know, wine glasses or cognac glasses or cordial glasses. Get the glue gun, build it. That looks really good, Gary. Thank you, Malia, it came out okay. Yours looks really nice. Well done, high five. High five. So Gary, you really take the cake when it comes to making cute DIY crafts. <laughs> I try, I definitely try. How'd you make this uh, cake plate? Super easy actually. Plates, Okay. candlesticks, spray paint, doily. First up, spray paint. All done. Grab yourself a plate. We're gonna throw down some glue on the candlestick. Throw down a lot. This must be the quickest craft in history. It's the quickest craft. Quickest craft in history. <laughs> it's the quickest craft in history. So then you want to just place it on there, push in real good. All right, let's flip it over. Now you're ready to picnic party. Ow. Boom. Swing by Seattle Goodwill for everything you need to create your own rustic picnic. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. To see more of Gary and Malia's DIY adventures, visit our website. And speaking of tasty summer get-togethers, the Taste of Tacoma kicks off Friday at Point Defiance Park. The annual celebration runs through this weekend, featuring more than 40 restaurants and vendors. Whether you come for the food, the live music, or just chill in the beer garden, there is definitely something for everyone. Best of all, it's free. For more information, check out thetasteofdacoma.com. Coming up on Refined, he thought he was being hoodwinked, but the truth turned out to be stranger than fiction. Plus, where does Seattle rank on the Bridezilla scale? Welcome back to Refined, I'm Guard Swanson. We've all received them, an email or an instant message from someone from a far off place asking for help. But what they really want is to scam you out of money. But what if it wasn't a scam? Reporter Dan Rascone brings us the story of a beautiful friendship that started in the strangest of ways. Just see what came in the mail. Fresh from the printer, a brand new book, volume two that tells an incredible journey 
of two people living 6,500 miles apart. This is the book that tells the story. A story that started with a Facebook post last April. The first word that came to my mind was scam. The message was, was from 50-year-old Joe Willie, who lives in one of the poorest countries in the world. Hello, sir. Well, my name is Joel from Liberia, West Africa. Please, I beg you in name of God, I need some assistance from you. 33-year-old Ben Taylor decided to play along. I was really just trying to keep him busy. I, you know, I thought the more time of his that I could waste, the less time that he'd have to spend ripping me or other people off. So Ben responded, how can I help? Joel asked Ben to send him used electronics. Ben thought of a better idea. So I lied to him and I said, I, I ran a photography business, which I don't. Um, and I said, you know, send me some pictures from where you live and I'll try to sell them and we can make some money together. To Ben's surprise, the photos arrived, but they were awful. The, the phone that he was using was just a dinosaur. Ben continued to play along. He actually bought Joel a $30 camera and sent it to him. Eventually, the pictures started to look really good. Ben had another problem. I've got to figure out a way to sell these pictures so I can come St. Joel and, you know, be done with them. So he took the photos and published his first book, By the Grace of God, a phrase Joel used constantly. The sales exploded. Ben made a $1,000 profit. That's $500 for Joel, a year's salary in Liberia. But instead of pocketing his share, Ben decided to take another chance. Send the full $1,000 to Joel and have him buy school supplies for needy children with the other half. Six bucks can barely buy you lunch here in Utah, but in Liberia, this is about a three-day wage. So you see why Ben was a little hesitant to send an extra $500 in cash and ask Joel to spend it on charity. Is he just trying to make me send him the money so that he can run away with it? True to his word, Joel did the right thing. He bought school supplies for kids from five different schools. A true saint. It just took me back because I had misjudged this guy. Hey, I know you. In February, Ben traveled to Liberia to meet Joel for the first time and got a tour of where he lived. CBS News correspondent Steve Hartman captured the reunion. So somehow you found Ben on this phone? Joel says he spent hours on Facebook messaging people, trying to support his family. I'm more than desperate, Steve, because I'm a family, I'm a father of seven. A desperate father just trying to feed his family and keep a roof over his head. Maybe not a scammer after all. I mean, I guess I was wrong about Joel. I did hope that one day I could come from nobody to somebody I could come from zero to be a hero. Volume two of the book by the Grace of Good is available now. It's already sold a thousand copies. Ben hopes to someday be able to help build a school in Liberia. We'll be right back. But first, this refined shareable moment. the show well Seattle just made a new top 10 list and we're not sure yet how we feel about it the we TV series Bridezilla's just released the findings of a new survey that ranked the top five Bridezilla cities and Seattle ranked eight if you don't know a Bridezilla is the term for a very temperamental soon-to-be bride who makes everyone's life a misery in the days leading up to her wedding if you want to learn more or see the full list it's on our website and speaking of monsters, the summer's newest potential blockbuster hits theaters Friday. That's when the latest spinoff from the Jurassic Park franchise stomps into theaters. It's called Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and it stars Lake Stevens' very own Chris Pratt. Fallen Kingdom has already made $150 million overseas. We'll have our spoiler-free refined review coming up this Thursday. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. I'm Garth Swanson. Thank you for joining us on Seattle Refined. We'll see you next time.